hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's see what happens and see what comes flying out of my face as I watch. So I want you to know that. Are you okay? None of my best game right now, but um, mm -hmm. it makes me happy that I'm in here with you. So did we talk about something light? No. No? So I think they are editing out a lot of silences. It kind of looks like that, where she, like Jessica, is in a position where she's waiting for Jimmy to lead the way and tell her where he's at. And he is just blank, at least from the outside. I think there's a lot of turmoil that's happening on the inside. So there's that. Also, we hear him say, can we talk about something light? This is what I was noting in past conversations that we saw, like with Chelsea herself, he, he was saying, can we change the subject or something like that? And it seemed to kind of come out of nowhere, but I couldn't make much of that. But she is, you know, I'm not in that relationship. I'm not there. I'm not in that situation. But from the outside, when he says, can we talk about something light? I'm thinking, what? <laughs> so just go into denial? That That's kind of weird. On the other hand, he might be thinking, look, we're here for the next number of, hour, of hours, and I just, I'm just wanting to get to know you even better or have some fun or joke around or something. That's kind of what I need right now. That'd be okay. Like if he said that, I'm wondering if Chelsea would go along with it. But just to say what he said, it can come across like, that. I, what? <laughs> That's going to be too hard for me. It doesn't make any sense. So... He's, is this going to be direct too? <laughs> is this going to be labeled as that it's against his 100% leading all the time? I, I don't know. There's a lot of things pointed at avoidance. And maybe it's not too much of a problem. You, know, you can have people that will do things like this and get by. It'll be annoying to partners, particularly partners that want more contact and communication. But it doesn't necessarily have to break a relationship. And of course, anyone in that position could go to therapy and become more balanced for their own sake. But it's quite possible that Chelsea and Jessica are seeing a side of him that is definitely a sign of things to come. And the kind of conflict that they're in right now is actually potentially pretty light compared to the actual conflict that couples experience down the line, right? So maybe they're, they'll all make a different evaluation based on that? I don't know. I just want to know what's going on. I don't like to talk like other dates. Well, clearly that's the situation we're in. Right. He said the same thing to Jessica and good on Chelsea for asserting that and saying, well, that's the reality. So now again, I think all he has to say, if he wants to get to the light portion of the date, I think all he has to say is, well, I, I'm still completely on the fence. Because for the women, every time they meet him, they don't know where he's at at that moment, right? He might think, well, I've already told you. And that's the mantra of the avoidant, is that they defend by saying, well, I've already told them. And I've already told them that I love them. And if you're a spouse of someone like this, you'll say like, well, what? Are you talking about like three and a half years ago? Yeah, but I'd like a, a little bit more reminders. because. <laughs> and then the avoidant person will say, well, I haven't done anything to make you believe I don't love you. And it's like, okay, but it's normal to want some reassurance or to want that contact or to want that the gift that you give someone, you know? So... It's a defense. I wanted to to see the just thing through. And our conversation today was absolutely terrible. Mm -hmm. I felt really good about you. I felt really good about her. And So Chelsea benefits in a way that Jessica didn't in that he just drops that detail, which is reassuring, you know, would be a calming thing to hear if you're Chelsea. Jessica didn't get that because it was interesting because both Jessica and Chelsea had a very similar reaction to his thing. But then Chelsea gets this little detail. It's almost like if he had the date with Chelsea first, 
would this look a lot different, like the opposite? You know, I'm here to find a wife. I'm here to find my best friend forever. Mm -hmm. I was going to try to maximize my time with everybody. And boy, do I feel terrible. Yeah. I'm doing that. He's a lot more fluid and communicative with Chelsea. That's either a result of him reforming his ways after the kind of disaster with Jessica, or he just feels more comfortable with Chelsea. And I wonder if the narrative is somehow that Chelsea is this doormat or this pleaser or this unassertive nice person, and Jessica is this hard, assertive person or something. I don't know. It seems to be the narrative that they might have. I don't know about Chelsea. But from my perspective, I don't see any... I mean, there's there's personality differences between Jessica and Chelsea, but they're pretty close when it comes to asserting... We just saw that Chelsea pushed back immediately without any hesitation. He's like, let's talk about something light. No, I, I don't think that works. <laughs> and And so... She is, uh, so I'd say both of them, in terms of directness, that word that I would use, have that quality. I would say that Chelsea comes across as a, a little softer, whatever that means. That doesn't mean that she's not assertive, but there's a, a kind of, I don't know, a, a kind of, uh, I don't know if it's innocence or sweetness that she has that, at least in the edit, Jessica has maybe less of, but Jessica could be very sweet. So anyway, I, I'm just wondering, is it like the darker hair? <laughs> Sometimes that's all you need for, especially women, to be labeled a certain thing. It's been a really long process. Feels like it, we've been here for months. Mm -hmm. It's been an even longer time since I've tried to express my feelings for someone. And maybe Chelsea's way of dealing with this is going to help this relationship a little bit because she's assertive, but she is just more comfortable with just sitting and listening, which I don't blame Jessica for coming across the way that she did. But, you know, some people, I, I have my moments like this <laughs> as a therapist, of course, I pride myself in my ability to listen. It might be hard for you to imagine that because I'm always yammering at you and you're the, <laughs> you're the one listening to me. But I want to emphasize two things. One, as a therapist, 99% of the time I'm listening. It's a tendency for therapists to insert themselves. And as a client myself, I've been annoyed sometimes when a therapist just starts to ramble. I'm like, oh, okay, I get the point. <laughs> what am I paying for? So... I try to avoid that. I, I I know that I mess up that sometimes for sure. Maybe even once every session, honestly, for a couple minutes. But generally speaking, I'm very, very comfortable listening, nodding my head, you know, just little chimes, chiming in, you know, just a little like, oh, wow, tell me more. What's going on there? Uh, you know, every therapist is, or at least every good therapist is, very comfortable with that. They probably wouldn't have become a therapist if they weren't good at that. Or if they didn't have that, they would develop it. Anyway, another context that I am, uh, you know, a pretty good listener is that uh, in certain social contexts, when people have a lot of need to talk, like they just want to really share something, like at a party, when I am, you know, just talking with various different people, I at the end of the night, we'll take a little bit of an inventory and realize that I know a lot about a lot of the people I talk to, maybe even for the first time, you know, like I'd never met them before. I know a lot about them, but they didn't leave knowing anything about me, and it, meaning that I was asking a lot of questions and they were sharing a lot and I didn't insert anything and they didn't ask me anything. And I'm totally fine with that. <laughs> It'll be that way with like Lyft drivers <laughs> I will, uh, you know, just ask questions like by the end of the ride, I I'll know their entire life story, you know, so I, I can listen well. And so for uh, but having said all that, there are people that are even more comfortable <laughs> listening like my wife. So 
uh, with Chelsea, I wonder if she's just more energy wise, just more patient, I guess. And that could either just be a sign of maturity or just a slight personality difference, or it could mean a little bit more of a doormat issue. But, you know, we didn't see that earlier in this date. She, you know, she was very quick and uncomplicated. You know, it wasn't busted up. She wasn't like hostile. She was like, no, I don't want to do that. You know, that, that shows comfort with assertiveness. I haven't even really hung out with you. We've hung out, but like, we're not even looking at each other. At each <laughs> other. It's insane. And, um, I get so happy when I think about, you know, our life together and all the fun things that we've already planned. Why didn't he say these things to Jessica? I think this would have helped. Now I'm thinking uh, he either doesn't know that he was preferring Chelsea at the beginning of this day, or he just wanted to obscure it. Like he was 60% Chelsea. And when he was with Jessica, he's like, well, there's, I'm still 40% Jessica. So I want to give this a try. And he just couldn't muster the energy to say the things he's saying now, or he was legit 50-50, or he was even pro-Jessica, and because of the way things played out, he's now totally into Jessica. Because the things he's saying right now, if he was truly on the fence, why didn't you say those things to Jessica? I think that would have really helped. Mm -hmm. So I'm not the smoothest at sort of talking through this, but... You're okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, the way that it looks is that Chelsea just fits better with him, but he's presenting very differently. And prior to this tense day, he would you know, had really great rapport with both people. So I wonder if this is just a... But maybe it's for the best, because if he was on the fence, someone's got to push him in a direction, and maybe both of them would be great for him or both of them would be equally bad for him. I don't know. <laughs> There's no way to know. Um, since I've felt this way about someone, but... I love you, Chelsea. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so on, uh, when, she, when he first said that, I, I'm thinking, oh, yeah. But then I think what he's saying is, it's like a promise ring, right? This is the the proposal before the proposal. Because, right, because with Jessica, he was saying, I can't say that I love anyone yet. And, uh, okay, so he's... But Chelsea's on the fence with, uh, uh, with Trevor. Yeah, with Mullet Man. Holy shit. Yeah, it's moments like this when I am thinking, yeah, this is this is reality TV. This is real. <laughs> Her emotion, it'd be hard to fake that. I suppose someone could, but that looks real, right? Because just imagine. Although for her, she also wants to be with Trevor. So maybe the feeling she's having is, oh, shit, I was ready for this. This means... I have to say something here. So she could even be more going for Trevor and then thinking, oh no, now I have to say, I don't know if I feel the same way about you. I don't know. It looks like she is enjoying it, feeling that intensity of like, oh my God, you love me, really? Please say something. Um. Oh, how the table has, the worm has turned. The table has turned. I think both work, right? You're the one sitting in silence, waiting. I had to throw up. I did not expect that. Oh my god. Okay, she so said she was about to throw up. Who knows? But just using that as a jumping off point, there can be some people who have issues with purging, and it can cause an association with emotion and intense emotion that can cause a, a quick response regarding that. Having said all that, it's totally normal for people under certain intense emotional experiences to throw up. I think the theory goes that we evolved 
and it's hard to know this because we don't have a time machine, but the speculation is that we evolved to under fight or flight circumstances, under extreme stress, just in general, of a predator, really, we will expel extra weight (laughs) from various orify, if you will, as a way of lightening the load. And maybe as a way of not only just weight wise, which probably wouldn't be the factor, it would be more of like, we don't really have the resources to tend to these things. So we should, we should get rid of them and we need oxygen and blood to go to muscles and other kinds of things. And so when we evolved as very social, emotional creatures and furthered that system of emotion, we can sometimes under extreme social stress that that isn't related to any sort of predator danger, we will have kind of the wires crossed and we'll have that impulse to throw up because our body is, is thinking, what you're having a really intense emotional reaction. And you might even cognitively code the emotion as positive, right? But you're having a very intense emotional reaction. And then your body says, well, we don't know what's going on out there, but it kind of looks like a predator is coming. So, you know, purge, fight or flight, adrenaline, your prefrontal cortex starts to lose blood and and oxygen because you need blood to other parts of your brain and your muscles. So you can't think quite right, you know? So, you know, who knows? Oh man, I am like, I want to pew, first of all. I'm flattered. Never told a girl I love them and they want to puke. Stop! It's just from... Or it's just her way of expressing herself because she's trying to communicate through a wall how intensely she's receiving this. You know, it's a weird expression, but, you know, a lot of people have weird expressions. All right, well, let's adjourn there and tune in next time if you care to and join me as I watch this and react. And everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.